Welcome back, little ones. Welcome back. Glad you all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. Um, we're going to uh, get right into prayer. I love you all with the love of the Lord. We'll go right into prayer. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning to another glorious day that you made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father God, for uh, your love. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. If not for your grace and mercy, we would not be here. Thank you for your long suffering and not easy to anger. Trace that we all need. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us. Not only forgiving us, but forget our, our trespasses and our transgressions against uh, you, Father God. And may we all forgive one another the same way. Forgive and forget. Don't hold anything, don't hold aught or anyone for anyone, anything but anyone for that matter. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you, Father God, for your outstretched arm. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for the blood of Jesus, for the remission of our sins, paid in full. Though we know we need to work our own salvation and fear and trembling of the Most High. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you for also for the stripes that you took for us to have life. Thank you, Father God. For setting an example for us, sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can learn how to live Christ's life. And Father God, thank you for your holy angels that watch over us each and every day, all day, even while we work and play and while we at rest. Thank you, Father God, for your holy angels. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit that guides us to all truth, that walks with us, talks with us, teaches us, put the words in our mouth when we don't know what to say or how to pray. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter. And Father God, thank you for uh, giving us a chance to get it right. Giving us another chance to, to praise you, to give, to praise the holy name. When we get up in the morning, we're grateful, Father God, that we even got up, woke our eyes and you opened our eyes this morning. Because you know what? Many did not. Many have not awakened. Many are right now preparing burials. We be grateful. We are so very grateful, Father God. And thank you. May we all be grateful. Live a try to live a strive for a life of holiness. Because holiness is the only thing that matters anymore. Time's up. We were not, there's no more exceptions, there's no more excuses, none of it. There was never an exception, but there's no excuses. You can't say you didn't hurt it. The Lord has poured out His Spirit upon all flesh, so we all know what we're supposed to be doing. That means that uh, you're striving for holiness and uh, no compromising. Holiness only, and that includes any and everybody, each and every one of us. No more excuses. Time's up. Glory be to God. And Father God, we thank you for. Uh, your love. Thank you for your love, Father God. Your pure love. And um, may we all love as you love us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. Father God, we ask a head of protection around each and every one of the listeners and their family members, of our family members and loved ones, Father God, all those in the body of Christ, Father God. We ask the same for them. The same for a uh, head of protection and the blood of Jesus. We plead over all the families and the listeners. And um, our family members and loved ones, those in the body of Christ. And Father God, we pray you this day that all that have not come to the truth give their life to you today before it's too late. We pray this day in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that those that have not given your life to Christ as yet, we pray that you do. And I'm going to um, go into what you're waiting for. I'm not going to ask you anymore because I've been telling you that for so long. And um, obviously, if you got plans, you're either going to accept them or you're not. But you know that eventually, well... Put it this way, you're going to choose you this day who you're going to serve. So either way, whether you choose him, if you choose him, you're for him. If you don't choose him, you're against him. Put it that way. With that being said, I love you all with the love of the Lord. Father God, help us protect our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because he was waiting to pounce and we're not letting him in. No way, shape, or form. There's no place or space for us in him. And there's no space or place for him in us. Excuse me, Lord. In us. He's not welcome. These are holy spirits. These are holy uh, vessels. These are holy vessels. And uh, a holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin life was given for us to have life. So our life don't belong to us. And these vessels are holy. Because our Father which art in heaven is holy. These holy temples belong to the Holy Spirit and He alone. We do, we do not open our doors to evil at all. And any curses or generational curses, Father God, witchcraft, spell, or voodoo, voodoo, we rebuke it all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We will take it, bind it, and cast it out to a place that will never return. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We say, go from whence you came and do not come back. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We proclaim Jesus Christ and he alone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. We thank you, Father God. And may this video go forth. Anything trying to come up and block it in any way, shape, or form, you already condemned in, Jesus, in, in judgment in Jesus' mighty name. 
And so you go on about your business. Not welcome here. Hallelujah. Get thee behind me, Satan. Hmm. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, here we thank you, Father God. We can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you, Father God. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise our holy name. We want you to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify the holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belongs to you and only you, Father God. And we say, use us for your glory and your glory alone. We're here to give you all the honor, praise, and glory. I know you're greatly to be praised. And we love you with an everlasting love and we'll never forsake you. And then we seal this prayer to Father God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. With that being said, we're getting right into it. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity now. You know, we all have free will. Have you heard Jesus Christ is coming back and he is the good news? He's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you are ready to do what is right and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this prayer. Not only are you going to say it, you're going to meet it from your heart. That means you're truly going to accept him as your Lord and Savior. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I am sorry, and please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead three days later after being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness, a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, a lonely sinner such as myself, and coming into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Just in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, after that, now... To continue in your walk, you know you have to read your word every day. That's the Bible, your Holy Scripture. You read it every day, down on your knees, and read it, and reach out to Him. And He and you shall, He shall uh, come to you, you shall hear from Him. And so uh, this is, this walk with Christ is a personal relationship. It's not religion. It's a personal relationship. It's a commitment and love between you and the Father. Okay? Okay. Uh... The next thing you need to do is repent for your sins. Please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. No more sinning. No more sinning. You're going to strive for holiness. Doesn't mean because we're in these fleshy bodies, we won't make errors. Yes, we will make a mistake. We'll sin not on purpose. And we repent immediately. Ask forgiveness immediately. Get down on your knees and ask forgiveness immediately. All right? And you're going to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you're going to be baptized and down in water, not a sprinkle, submerged all the way down in water. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay? God bless you in your walk of Christ. Congratulations to the new body of Christ, my brother and sister. God bless you. We in the body of Christ, may we welcome you, welcome. May we pray for you, pray with you, pray without ceasing, fast. Bear one another's burdens, love, and charity to carry a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. They don't carry, excuse me, Lord God, they cover a multitude of sin. <laughs> like I said, get thee behind me, Satan. They cover a multitude of sin. Love and charity covers a multitude of sin. So glory be to God. That being said, welcome again, my brother and sister in the body of Christ. Well, today we're doing, we're going right into scripture. Mm-hmm. He gave me Proverbs this morning, and I'm going to do Proverbs chapter 6, 7, and 8. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, 
Go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine, to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Wilt thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fondling of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Throw in his ears in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs are of instruction are the way of life, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with their eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man's brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief, if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall, get, shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Chapter 7 My son, keep my words, and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments, and live and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went away to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me, this day have I pray, have I paid my vows, excuse me, Lord. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of pastry, with carved works, and with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love this morning. <laughs> let me go again. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not 
that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now there, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. Chapter 8. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the past. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall, my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with, with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the fraud mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. Be by my kings, excuse me, Lord, by me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, doable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold and my revenue then choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the past of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were set, before the mountains were settled, excuse me, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Mm. You, you, like I said, you either for the Lord or you're against him. When you're against him, well, your ways are, are definitely seeking death. Unless you seek the Lord. Glory be to God. We are so blessed to be able to seek the Lord while we can. You know? And give him all the praise and honor that is so worthy. He is so worthy. Glory be to God. Well, we're on... Uh, we're still in the book of Numbers, and we're on chapter 8. Aaron puts the gold lamps in place. Aaron puts the gold lamps in place. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron to put the seven lamps on the lampstand, so they shine toward the front. Aaron obeyed and placed the lamps as he was told. The lampstand was made of hammered gold from its base to the decorated flowers on top, exactly like the pattern the Lord had described to Moses. The Lord said to Moses, the Levites must be acceptable to me before they begin working at the sacred tent. So separate them from the rest of the Israelites and sprinkle them with the water that washes away their sins. Then have them shave their entire bodies and wash their clothes. They are, going to, they are to bring a bull and its proper grain sacrifice of flour mixed with olive oil. And they must bring a second bull as a sacrifice for sin. Then, then you, Moses, will call together all the people of Israel 
and have the Levites go to my sacred tent, where the people will place their hands on men. Aaron will present the Levites to me as a gift from the people, so that the Levites will do my work. After this, the Levites are to place their hands on the heads of the bulls. Turn one of the bulls, then, excuse me, then one of the bulls will be sacrificed for the forgiveness of sin, and the other to make sure that I am pleased. The Levites will stand at my altar in front of Aaron and his sons, who will then dedicate the Levites to me. This ceremony will show that the Levites are different from the other Israelites and belong to me in a special way. After they have been made acceptable and have been dedicated, they will be allowed to work at my sacred tent. They are mine and will take the place of my firstborn served Israelite sons. When I killed the oldest sons of the Egyptians, I decided that the firstborn sons in each Israelite family would be mine, as well as every firstborn male from their flocks and herds. But now I have chosen these Levites as substitutes for the firstborn sons, and I have given them as gifts to Aaron and his sons to serve at the sacred tent. I will hold them responsible for whatever happens to anyone who gets too close to the sacred tent. Moses, Aaron, and the other Israelites made sure that the Levites did everything the Lord had commanded. The Levites sprinkled themselves with the water of forgiveness and washed their clothes. Then Aaron brought them to the altar and offered sacrifices to offer or to forgive their sins and make them acceptable to the Lord. After this, the Levites worked at the sacred tent as assistants to Aaron and his sons, just as the Lord had commanded. The Lord also told Moses, Levites who are between the ages of 25 and 50 can work at my sacred tent. But once they turn 50, they must retire. They may help the other Levites in their duties, but they must no longer be responsible for any work themselves. Remember this when you assign their duties. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, God's willing, tomorrow we come back to Numbers chapter 9, Regulations for Celebrating Passover. Glory be to God. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Tell your loved ones that you love them. Tell them about Father God who gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, was resurrected from the grave three days later by the Most High. Father God and Jesus are one. Father God is the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit dwells within that uh, begotten body. That Holy Spirit dwells within us. If we seek Him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, we shall find Him. Glory be to God. You all have a chance to get it right. If you haven't given your life to Christ, please do. And, uh, tell your lovers that you love them. We all make mistakes. I'm a work in progress. I make many mistakes. But at least I have the decency to repent. I repent immediately if I realize I made a mistake. Or if I haven't, I repent anyway. To ask forgiveness for anything that I'm not aware I made, I did. You know? I love you all to love the Lord. You all have yourselves a blessed day. God bless you all. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. God bless you. Bye-bye.